Well, all right, everybody. Hail and welcome back to another episode of Random Heathen Ramblings. Episode 18 of season two. My name is Jesse and I am your host as usual and as always until further notice, until somebody else takes over this crazy ship. <laughs> so I uh, got an interesting one for us today. We're going to be hearing from uh, a supporter of the podcast. He's called in a few times. He's actually sent a few voice messages in, been really interactive, uh, really appreciate it. We're going to be hearing from him. Um, thank you for calling in uh, to Crow from the uh, Deathlanders in Idaho. So we're going to be hearing in from him. And then I also got this really neat or interesting uh, thing that I found online today on a, on a Facebook group um, discussing a little bit about uh, Odin and some of the similarities between other cultures or, uh, you know, the, the, the similarities of the Odin aesthetic, the Odin figure, um, that sort of thing. So that's going to be kind of what uh, this episode is about. So let's go ahead and get through our intro and let's, uh, let's, let's get into this. So thank you all for tuning in. Let's, let's, let's do it. All right. Well, there's that. Um, there's that, and here you are. Here you are listening and watching to yet another Random Heathen Ramblings episode. Uh, thank you to all my listeners. Thank you to all my uh, followers, subscribers, um, supporters, friends, um, everybody out there that supports what I do here on this podcast um, in any way that you can. Don't forget. If you are listening to this podcast and you want to see what's going on behind the scenes, you can also watch the uh, video version of this podcast by becoming a member of Midgard Musings on YouTube. The information for that will be uh, included in the show notes of this podcast. Um, and so therefore, just head to the show notes and join Midgard Musings. Um, become a member of Midgard Musings on YouTube today if you want to not just listen, but watch. Okay, I understand that a lot of folks out there are into listening to the podcast and don't want to pay for a, you know, monthly subscription to something that they could just watch for free. That's totally fine. But if you want to see what's going on kind of behind the scenes, um, definitely consider, you know, becoming a member of the channel. All of my support information is going to also be linked up in the, uh, the show notes uh, for those that are watching who are members um, on the YouTube channel. Head down into uh, the description to find the Linktree link. Um, don't forget to follow my, follow my Twitter account. <laughs> follow me on Twitter at Midgard Musings. Find and follow or like the Facebook page um, and become a patron on Patreon if you so choose. Buy my merchandise. Got some really cool t-shirts, you know, sweatshirts, hoodies, tank tops, onesies for the infants and the babies, you know, uh, children's sizes, women's sizes. Um, everybody can get something cool um, on the Midgard Music Store. All that information is linked in the link tree so just click on that and it's like your one one-stop shop um don't forget if you do want to be featured on on the podcast like pro who are about to listen to his um his uh message if you want to be featured on the podcast and you want to have your voice heard please feel free to call into the um midgard musings hotline which is uh, 615-671-9832. Uh, so Crow was really kind um, and has been in the past uh, several episodes, sporadically a bit, um, been really kind to uh, 
share some of his thoughts. So I want to go ahead and um, have you guys listen, watch, whatever. Uh, listen to his his voicemail that he left here on the hotline. Really, really interesting stuff. So let me uh, let me put my headphones on so I can listen to this and you guys can listen too. Um, but like I said before, yeah, Crow is, uh, I believe he's the Gothi of the uh, Deathlanders tribe, which is in um, Idaho. So let's go ahead and listen to, to Crow's message. Hey, Jesse, it's Crow from the Deathlanders once again. Um, I would like to say, first and foremost, congrats on your four-year anniversary. That's Thank amazing. you, Crow. Four years is a very long time. Um, it's, 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 it feels a lot longer. <laughs> it feels a lot longer than what it is uh, sometimes. You know, four years may seem like a fleeting moment, but it, it feels a lot longer that, in a good way. But, yeah. And uh, as per the uh, stanza, uh, stanza 48 that you had mentioned, um, I was thinking about that, and... Um, I thought that, you know, if a friend is like a well, quote unquote friend um, is too afraid to invest like the same time and energy and to give like gifting you back as you have gifted them, are they really worth your time? Mm -hmm. um, I do think, however, that uh, the stanza uh, 41 kind of really best personifies the benefits of having such a friend that invests the same amount of like time and energy in gifting. Um, it, I'm going to be reading from the Cowboys of Mall because, well, that's just how everybody talked where I grew up. Um, <laughs> but uh, nothing wrong with that, man. Nothing wrong with that at all. Um, Jackson Crawford's Cowboy Hall of Mall, you know, uh, really, really awesome. Um, I, I want to say that one translation or one very, because I have the Wanderers Hall of Mall, and I think. If it's not in this one, it, it, you know, of course, he's got it published elsewhere. But, yeah, the, co the Cowboy Hall of Mall is, is, is pretty awesome. Um, uh, it says, uh, give your friend a gift that'll matter to him. Weapons, clothes, you know the kind. The kind of giving if he gets you back. Uh, this kind of giving if he gets you back, sorry, will mean he'll have your back when it counts. So... Yeah, I thought that kind of, kind of, well, just really laid it out. <laughs> yeah, um, lays it right out. And as per like anything to like any other new topic or anything, uh, I had seen a uh, post on some other. This is always social great. Media. I love hearing and, other people's um, thoughts. On there's things. a guy talking about how. Uh, he thinks the gods are, have abandoned him because he can't feel any of their presence or like anymore uh, during his rituals and stuff. Mm. And somebody had answered back to that with uh, with um, sorry, I'm trying to best to word this in my mind uh, that like. When we first became heathen, everything is brand new to us, and we can feel the presence of the gods and the whites and, you know, veered and everything. But as time goes on, we get used to that presence, and we don't, you know, pick up on it as much. Hmm. Um, I thought that was a very interesting answer. But uh, anyways, have a good day. Um, you yeah, too, man. Cowboys are still here in Idaho. Uh, <laughs> my brother uh, Otso and his dad are actually uh, – one of the old ones. So, yeah. Anyways, kill Odin and drink plenty of water. Absolutely, man. Drink plenty of water and hail Odin on Odin's day. Um, that's a really interesting thing, too. We're actually going to talk a bit about the stanza that you brought up there, Crow, um, towards the end of this episode. Um, thought it would be a good stanza to read different translations from or read from different translations. So um, thank you for calling in with that bit of insight and sharing your thoughts and reading from the uh, Cowboy Hovamal. But um, to your point, I also think that's a really good um, 
thing to think about. Um, and I'm probably going to reserve some conversation about this for the next episode of Random Heathen Ramblings because I'd like to get some other people's um, feedback or buy-in on such a topic because I love to hear, you know, when, when it comes to our interactions with the gods, when it comes to our interactions with um, any of the sacred or even the spirit realm, when we talk about the whites, the Vatir, that sort of thing, um, and how much we feel they're connect, you know, how, how much we feel connected with these, you know, forces, these beings. Um, I think it would be a great uh, topic of discussion for another audience or, or, or and not, not another audience, but other participants. I'd like to get some other feedback. So I'm going to reserve my thoughts about this particular thing that you uh, called in about till probably the next episode um, because I've got some future episodes lined up with other guests. And so therefore, um, next week, uh, next Wednesday, I'm going to have... Um, uh, somebody else on the show. And we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about our connection uh, with the gods or with the spirits of the land and the house or whatever, the Vatir, you know, um, and, and kind of touch upon that. But I think it's a great thing to kind of have in our minds. This light is flushing me out. I think I might do. I might. Yeah, that's a whole lot better. Yeah. Well, not a whole lot, lot better, but it's a little bit better. Um, so yeah, that's going to be something that we talk about um, next week. So in the interim, in the meantime, as they say, I don't know who they are, whoever they are, say. In the meantime, but um. Well, anyways, let me find this uh, post that I was talking about. Oh, good. It's still up. So this person posted in a public uh, Facebook group, Facebook forum that I'm in. It says, Odin and other religions or cultures, all religions and uh, mythologies, um, converges to this great flood during Ragnarok and all the gods so, or angels or whatever they whatever name they put to these, these beings died or are killed by um, giants the, the idea of, of Ragnarok uh, in, in Norse mythology you know the, the gods against the Jotun Jotnar um, but this person is finding similarities and comparisons in other religions or other cultures um, that share a lot of similarities to this sort of thing. And I thought it was an interesting approach with this whole uh, great flood thing, because we look at Christian lore, Christian mythology, Christian doctrine, whatever, Old Testament stuff, right? Noah and the great flood. So this person's finding some correlations. Um, and they start with the, uh, the, the, the Noah thing in, in Abrahamic faith. Noah was warned by an archangel, Uriel, to build an ark by God. Now, look, I was raised uh, Christian uh, for most of my life, and I don't remember the name of the angel that came to Noah ever being mentioned in the Old Testament. Now, again, I am not an authority. I'm not the, I am, I, you know, I'm not a, 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 a scholar of Abrahamic religion. I just, you know, was raised in it and, and read uh, the King James Bible, King James Version uh, of the Bible, like seven, eight, nine times front to back um, over a couple of decades. And I don't ever remember the name Uriel appearing in that version. 
not to say that it's not that figure or whatever, but um, suffice it to say, Noah built the ark in the lore, right? To save humanity, to save his family from this impending flood that was set to wipe out most of humanity. Uh, the end of the world, as it were, at that time. Um, in Hinduism, so again, so going, go, going forward with this person saying, like, what this person is bringing up in terms of yeah, information and knowledge and, and, and such, um, how it, how, it um, uh, how accurate it is, is, you know, somebody listening or watching this may be like, well, actually, this, that thing or the other, it's whatever. I'm not going to argue that. So anyway, going forward, um, Hinduism. The god uh, Brahma orders Vishnu to tell Manu to build a large vessel um, as the uh, Kal Kalpa Yuga was ending. Not sure what that is, but again, some sort of impending doom, some sort of big scale event that was set to, you know, white people out or whatever. Next, we've got um, Babylonian or Sumerian Mesopotamian beliefs. Uh, the god um, Enlil, I think is what it is, um, orders a figure uh, Utrapistim, I don't know how that's pronounced, to build an ark as the god Anu was sending a great flood. So again, another Big blood thing happening. Um, in the Greek mythology, Zeus asks, um, do Kalion, do Celion, how you even horrible with uh, some of these Greek pronunciations on things, to build a vessel as because Zeus is furious and would wipe all of the humans and the gods um, out and end the Bronze Age. Now, here's where I think that this information that's being shared may not be shared from somebody that knows everything about mythology or that they're, they're, they're cherry picking and trying to, they're stretching it a little bit. Because in the, in the next um, uh, section is that uh, in Norse mythology, um, Odin is said to order uh, Belgirmir to build a vessel because of a great flood that was coming. And so this person's conclusion is that Odin is the same as in the Abrahamic faith, as named as in the, with named therein as the god or sorry the archangel Uriel, um, who is also the same as you know uh, Vishnu or uh, not Vishnu but uh, Brahma, uh, Enlil, Zeus, and all that. They're all the same figures just name something differently based off of different cultures now i can i can kind of vibe with that right i can kind of jive with that because um we we, we see a lot of similarities between gods and, and and sacred figures and uh that sort of thing but what i thought was interesting is that uh where they where they brought up this whole notion of um, Bergeromir as being ordered by Odin to build a vessel because of an imp impending uh, fl flood or whatever. Now, according to Gil um one of, uh, one of the poems in uh, Snorri's prose Edda, um, the flood that's being referred to is the flood that comes due to Emir being slain. So if I were to refer to Gilfaginning, um, again, the blood of Emir is flooding the earth after Bor, Odin, or I'm sorry, after Bor has killed him. Um, you know, Odin, Billy, they all, they all have their hand in, in the slaying of Ymir. Um, and this flood that happens because of this influx of blood from, from slaying Ymir, um, uh, Bergelmir is, is, is said 
to escape that flood. Um, but so the, the actual stanza from, from, from Gil Fagini, um is that the sons of Boar, I said before that Boar killed Emir. Um, I'm, I'm correcting myself on the record is that Odin, Vili, and Fey, the sons of Boar, are the ones who slew Emir in the mythology. Um, so they, 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 they killed Emir, and when he fell, so much blood gushed from his wounds that with it, all of the frost giants were killed except one who got away with his family, and that's uh, Berglamir. The giants called that one Berglamir. He got up from his luther along with his wife and saved himself there, and from them come the families of the frost giants. And so yeah, I guess the similarities that this person that I was reading the story from or, the, or this post from the, the, the similarities that they're, find, that they're trying to find is that, you know, um, Odin ordered Berglamir to build a vessel. I don't see that appearing anywhere in the mythology. It's not like Odin said, hey, you know, we need to make sure that your line survives through this amazing flood of blood that is, uh, that's happening now because me and my brothers decided to whack our grandfather. So, but, you know, again, I think it's an interesting thing to think about that, um, you know, Odin appears as something similar, but called different in so many cultures. It's, it's, not a, it's not a stretch of the imagination or it's not a stretch of the mind to see that. I do have my, uh, my, my good friend, Richard, who has been on this podcast and has been featured on my channel. Um, he's been a guest on, on this, uh, a couple times in the past, he was, um, part of the three year sort of anniversary celebration of the, of the YouTube channel, um, a month or so ago and or back in March, I guess it was a while back, but anyway, he is a uh, Enochian and he is, you know, when, when we talk about things regarding, you know, Nephilim, demons, angels, that sort of thing, um, that that's that 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 had you know it's from some really good conversations some really intriguing conversation that i have with him so you know hearing about um the archangel uriel um i remember talking to richard about this particular entity this particular figure um it'd be really interesting to get him back on an episode which i'm sure he's up for um, but he is actually in Las Vegas currently um, getting married. Or he actually, he got married earlier today. So he's, he's celebrating a, a, a new uh, marriage. So he probably won't be back on here for at least another couple of weeks um, if I'm able to get him back on here. But I know he's up for it because he said like, hey, you don't want me back to talk about some things. I think this would be a really good one to see. Um, the similarities or the or or the connection between Uriel and Odin. So I want to have that conversation again um, when he's able to come back. But um, what do you guys think? You know, you guys are listening, watching, whatever. What do you guys think? What do you guys think about um, the connection or the correlation of Odin existing in other cultures, being called by different names for this? You know. Um, or, or the interpretation of Odin, right? The interpretation of Odin is being slightly different in different cultures, different religions. Um, but ultimately, at the end of the day, we all have a similar figure. We have a similar similar uh, deity, as it were. So, I don't know. I think it's I think it's pretty fascinating uh, to think about. And I thought it was very timely. You know, this person could have posted it any other day of the week, um, and they posted it on. Wednesday's day, Wednesday's day, Wednesday's dagger, Wednesday. Um, my pronunciations are awful when it comes to some of these things. I need to improve on that. But it's Wednesday. 
my dudes. It is Wednesday, my dudes. It's an old meme. You might not understand. You might not get it. But um, that's what it is. It is what it is. So that is kind of the major topic for today's episode is, you know, Odin and the flood, Odin and the great flood, and the similarities of the correlations that exist um, across different cultures. So call in 615-671-9832. Let me know what you think about that. Think about it yourself. You know, chew on that fat a bit. Give it a give it a whirl. Um, but okay, so um, what we're going to do now is talk about the, the the stanza 41 that Crow mentioned in his call earlier when he called in. Um, and I appreciate that. Could have picked any random stanza to to go over on today's episode, again, trying to get back into that normal cadence of things. I'm hearing drums, and I don't know why. Hmm. You guys are listening to the podcast. I don't want to distract you from anything. You guys can't hear it, but I can. I'm hearing like... I need my headphones. Remember Gandalf in uh, Lord of the Rings when they're in the mines of Moria and he's reading the he's reading the uh, the inscriptions on stone and stuff, and he's drums, drums in the deep. I'm hearing drums. I'm hearing drums of some sorts. What is what is even that? What is that? What is even going on? It's like do 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 do. My little uh, my little gnome guy, my little ponta fell from my shelf. I gotta figure this out. Hold on. All right. All right. That was weird. That was very weird. You guys may not have heard anything because I stepped out of frame like a like a rude host. But I'm sorry for my podcast listeners for the for the for the break. Uh of sound for the for the silence or for the wonderment that you may have captured like you were wondering what is going on with jesse right now why is he not talking to us where did he go you may have heard some noise in the background there's this toy remember i said drums drums in the deep drums drums in the deep no it wasn't drums in the deep my 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 friends out here my my, my dudes and dudettes no what it was was a toy that just randomly started uh, making like drum noises. Um, it's <laughs> it's something for my future niece that was in the playroom in the next room over, and it just started randomly making like it was just drumming randomly, like no real cadence, no order of anything. It was just drumming randomly. And I'm sorry for being so rude to step away. For those that, that watch, I step out of frame. But for those that were listening, you, you guys had a, had a break of a break in, uh, of sound there. I just went off. I was, I, was, I was absolutely captivated by what I was hearing, trying to figure out where in the heck it was coming from. And that's what it was. It was a toy. My infant niece that is not yet born. And just started random. I started going there and I had to turn it off. I'm like, listening i'm like is it is it, is it at first i thought it was like 
because my where I'm sitting right now is adjacent to our bathroom. And I thought well, maybe that like the sink faucet or whatever water's dripping. Uh, and that wasn't it. And then I followed the sound into the spare bedroom, playroom, whatever. And that's what it was. So when I say random heathen ramblings, uh, random is the operative word here because <laughs> you can't you couldn't have planned that. I had no way of planning that. But um, anyway, back to it. Stanza forty one. Thank you, Crow, for bringing some context into some things, or, or, or you know, mentioning how this stanza um, really helps uh, you know us, us get to the understanding of what true friends are. So as usual, we've got the Auden and Taylor, the Bellows, the Bray, the Hollander, their Terry Thorpe and Jackson Crawford translations. So uh, Auden and Taylor reads, with present friends should please each other with a shield or a costly coat. Mutual giving makes for friendship so long as life goes well. Okay, and the Bellows translation is friends shall gladden each other with arms and garments as each for himself can see. Gift givers, friendships are longest found if fair their fates may be. And then Oliver Bray is with Raymond and arms shall friends gladden each other. So has one proved oneself. For friends last longest if fate be fair, who give and give again. The Hollander translation reads, uh, with presence, friends should please each other with a shield or a costly coat. Mutual giving makes for friendship so long as life goes well. Very similar to the, that's almost identical. That is identical. It's identical to the Auden and Taylor. Um, the Terry translation is gift, give your friends gifts. They're as glad as you are to wear new clothes and weapons. Frequent giving makes friendships last if the exchange is equal. I feel like that's important. Uh, Thorpe reads, with arms and vestments, friends should each other gladden those which are in themselves most sightly. Givers and requiters, quitters, are longest friends if all else goes well. Uh, and then uh, Thorpe, sorry, not Thorpe, uh, Crow, I say Thorpe, Crow read from the Cowboy Hovamol, which was um, also uh, written by Jackson Crawford, but I am reading from the Wanderers Hovamol. And in that translation, uh, stanza 41 is that friends should provide their friends with weapons and clothing. This kind of generosity shown, generous mutual giving is the key to lifelong friendship. Generous mutual giving. We hear about um, equal exchange, mutual exchange, mutual giving. This stanza really does stand out to me as an important spotlight on the importance or value of gift giving, giving gifts, um, because in so many times whenever we choose to gift to our friends, our family, our loved ones and such, there's usually something going on, right? It's a birthday, an anniversary, some sort of holiday or whatever event, but give, gifting for the sake of gifting uh, often um, can be done in an effort to, um, you know, bring up someone's spirits, make them feel uh, loved and, and um, please them in some sort of way, um, or can also be done as a sort of gesture of perceived obligation. And this is an important uh, thing to understand is that I think a lot of times in, in modern day, we hear the word obligation and we automatically 
connect that word with something potentially negative, we can potentially think of it, well, if I'm obligated to somebody, it's because they, I've done them, done them wrong. You know, I've faulted in some sort of way. I've done something to require my recompense uh, and that sort of thing. And that's not the case. Obligation in, in, in a heathen worldview or in a heathen perspective is an important uh, part of maintaining um, that gifting cycle, maintaining that uh, equal exchange uh, relationship. It's about breath. Obligation is good um, within a heathen context, at least in most cases. So how often a gift is given um, can quite often set the bar. Um, and, and the mutual understanding of if a gift is given, now a gift should be, or if a gift is received, now a gift should be given and so on and so forth. It's this, this, this obligation, this understanding of what is uh, required or what is what we are obligated to each other to do, um, that is a part of the social construct of um, who we tie weird with, who we share and build frith with as heathens, right? So again, with when it comes to holidays or birthdays or any other sort of you know gift giving event or day, um, that doesn't really fit. You know what I mean, like. Yes, there's a sense of obligation there, but it's like, oh, I'm obliged to do this because I, you know, it's their birthday, or I have to do this because it's an anniversary, or I have to do it because of this, because of that. Um, that sense, like, that doesn't mean the same thing as what I'm talking about here. You know, um, other times when we want to give gifts, when we do it because we want to strengthen the bonds of frith, that sort of thing, that's what I feel that this stanza is talking about. Give freely give often give freely doesn't have to be a lot you know doesn't have to be extravagant doesn't have to be elaborate enjoy the joy of giving and receiving um and your friends your true friends will respond in kind they will do the same things they will you know engage in that gifting cycle because they understand and they know the value and the meaning behind it whether they're heathen or not and i and i and i um i maintain that this idea this concept that we're talking here right now about um is not bound to simply a heathen view there, this this is something that can be understood and recognized as beneficial across many cultures uh, across many beliefs um and you know you can call it whatever you want you can call it frith you can call it whatever it's it the labels don't matter so much as the gesture and the meaning behind it so i really appreciate crow from the deathlanders in idaho for referencing this particular stanza to bring up on this podcast and i appreciate everybody listening and watching tonight today um, here on this Wednesday on May the 5th, 2021. Um, if you guys are listening and you want to watch what's going on here on the podcast, please, again, check the show notes. Become a member of Midgard Musings. I've said it before. The time that I spend doing these things once a week or whatever is um, my time means something to me. And by you guys coming out here to support me through whether it be, you know, Patreon or whether it be through, you know, memberships or whether it be through buying merchandise or donations or whatever, it is absolutely not required, but it, it helps me gauge the, the, the interest, right? I do these things um, in my free time, in my spare time, but my time means something to me. I could be doing a lot of other things and being here, sharing ideas, sharing thoughts, having you guys engage. Um, it means a lot. So getting that little bit of reciprocation, that sort of thing. You are by no means obligated to do so. Let me just go on the record as saying that. But it's appreciated if you do. You know, so um, while you're out there thinking about this, while you're listening to this podcast, if you aren't yet subscribed to the YouTube channel, please head over 
to the show notes and click the link tree link to find where you can find me on YouTube. You can just go to YouTube and search for Midgard Musings. I'll be there. You can also follow me on Twitter. Look forward to having you follow me there. I do share things almost daily. At least I try to. Um, and also like the Facebook page. Um, and those are all the ways that you can support me for free. Just follow my social media, subscribe, share, like, comment, that whole thing. Um, algorithms mean a lot to us as content creators. So if you're listening on the podcast and you didn't do anything else uh, social media-wise, please upvote the podcast. Give it a like, follow it, you know, whatever uh, podcast platform that you're listening on. Make sure that the podcast platform that you're listening on knows that you like what I do. Um, so until we talk again next week, we're going to have another guest on the podcast. His name is Chris. Uh, we're going to be talking about um, uh, some various random things, of course, as it, as it tends to be very random here on the podcast. Random Healing Ramblings is called it for a reason. Uh, but we're also going to talk about what Crow mentioned, you know, where somebody feels that they've kind of lost connection with the gods or with the whites or with the Vatir. Um, in their pagan practices. So we're going to talk about that. I think that'd be a great um, conversation to uh, engage somebody else's thoughts and ideas in. So be sure to follow what I do here on this podcast and on this channel. If you're watching, um, share it around, let people know to be here each and every week, try to upload new content um, on a very regular basis. Sometimes my schedule gets a little bit hectic, um, but suffice it to say, I will be here at least once a week. So thank you all so much for tuning in today and listening or watching. Be sure to, again, support this podcast in any way that you can, um, anything that works for you. Until we talk again, hail, and may your heart fires always continue to burn bright.